Hello geometry students, this is Mr. Fugay, and for our lesson today we are going to talk about how we can use trig ratios to find missing sides of the triangle. So a couple quick things before we jump into some examples. Um, I have up here on the screen on the left hand side our notes, and on the right hand side I have a scientific calculator that I'm going to use. So if you have your own handheld calculator, TI-84 or any other type of calculator, of course have that out. Otherwise feel free to use an online calculator yourself. What I have on the right is desmos.com slash scientific, and that's what I'll be using for this. So feel free to use that or any other of your choice. So one of the things I want to mention here is coming into this lesson, there are three things I want to be able to use throughout this lesson. The most important being the trig ratios themselves. So at this point, you've hopefully learned what the sine, the cosine, and the tangent ratio are. And a quick way to remember what those ratios are is to use the acronym SOKATOA. And that's a really quick uh, one-word way. I know it's not the easiest word to spell or, or know, but knowing SOKATOA is going to help you in practice to be able to remember those ratios. The last thing before we start is you want to make sure your calculator is set into degree mode. There are different ways to measure angles, and so the way we're going to use right now is degrees. So on the scientific calculator, you'll see right here there's a toggle to switch between RAD, which is radian, DEG, which is degree. On your handheld calculator, there should be a mode button. And in that mode button, you want to make sure degrees is highlighted. A good way to check that you're in the right mode is if I type in sine and then type 30 in, the answer should return 0.5 or 1 half. So as long as it does that, then you are in good shape. Okay, so we've got that all under control. Let's go ahead and let's dive into some examples. So I have four of them in this uh, lesson that we are going to take a look at. So it says, using trig ratios, find the value of x. Now, if we want to find a missing side of a right triangle, if we know two of the sides, we know that we can use the Pythagorean theorem. However, we are presented here in example one with a situation where I only know one of the sides, and I want to find the second side. So what you need in that situation in order to do trig ratios is you need to know at least one of the acute angles, which in this case I do, 23, I need to know one side. In this case, I know 16, which happens to be my hypotenuse. The side that I want to find related to the angle 23 degrees is my opposite side. So using SOKATOA, I want to create a trig equation using the sine ratio. So how do we do this? So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to identify that the sine ratio of 23 degrees is going to equal the opposite side of 23, which is x, and the hypotenuse side of 23, which is 16. And there it is. We have our equation. Now, what do we do from here? Well, our calculator is able to calculate a sine, cosine, and tangent ratio if we know the angle. What the calculator does is when I type in sine and then I type in 23, the input of 23 is saying to the calculator, I want the opposite over the hypotenuse ratio of a 23 degree angle triangle that has basically a, not a right triangle that has a 23 degree angle. So it's going to return a decimal value. Yes, there exists a ratio or a fraction out there, but we're not going to find that. We're going to stick with just the decimal answer. So the opposite over hypotenuse ratio of a 23 degree angle can be estimated at 0 0.391. I'm going to round it to three decimal places. However, if you can use the exact value in your calculator, using the answer button or the store button, that's actually the preferred way of doing this. And I'll show you on Desmos calculator how I do that. So sine of 23 is equal to 0 0.391, and now we know that that is equal to x over 16. So in this first example, it's nice is that the variable is in the numerator, and so to get the variable by itself, we are going to multiply both sides by 16. And so when I do that, those 16s cancel on the right-hand side, and then on the left-hand side, I'm going to take my 0 0.3907, and I'm going to multiply it. And on here, the easiest way probably to do this, I believe, is to uh, probably copy and paste it, if it'll let me. Oh, there's an answer button right here. I'm learning in real time as we're doing this video. I'm going to do this in one take. Press the answer button. It copies the previous line down, and we're going to go times 16. And there's your answer. So my x value, my missing side here would be, let's round it to the nearest 10, 6.3.
Now, if we happen to want to find that third side, you actually could set up another trig ratio equation or set up Pythagorean theorem. All right, let's try a few others. Let's jump down and try example number three. So in this example, we have a 57 degree angle. And when I go to label my side, we notice that 11 will be the hypotenuse and X will be this time my adjacent. So the equation that I want to use in this situation would be the cosine ratio. So we're going to say cosine of 57 equals the adjacent, which is X, over the hypotenuse, which is 11. So we're really going to go through the exact same calculations that we already did. I'm going to type in cosine, but let's clear this out first. Uh, we're going to do cosine of 57, and we're going to get an answer of 0 0.54. We'll say 5. Again, we're going to use the stored value anyways. Equals x over 11. And so to solve this, just like the last one, since x is in the numerator, we can multiply both sides by 11. That's going to cancel the 11s out on the right-hand side. And so all I need to do in my calculator is take my previous answer, 0.544. So press enter after each time. Uh, press the answer button, and then we're going to go times 11. And so what I get here is 5.99. That's just going to round to 6 in this situation. So the missing side we're looking for is 6. Now, what happens when the variable is on the bottom? Well, the steps are going to be a little bit more involved. And let me go ahead and show you how that's going to work in our next two examples. So let's look here at example 2 now. Yeah, I know I went out of order. The opposite side of 61 is going to be 13. The hypotenuse is going to be x. And so just like the first example we had done in this video, we're going to use the sine ratio of 61 degrees to help us find this. But in this case, notice I'm going to get 13 over x. So what happens here? So I'm going to first compute sine of 61 and press enter. And that's going to give me 0 0.87, we'll say 5, equals 13 over x. Now, in the first two examples, I had always multiplied by the denominator, and that's how we get rid of a fraction. So I'm going to have to do the same here. I'm going to multiply, though, this time by x. So on the right-hand side, the x's are going to cancel, and on the left-hand side, I'm going to be left with the number 0.875x equals 13. So notice in this situation, we're going to have to do an extra step. We're not done the problem yet. So the last thing I'm going to do here is divide both sides by 0.875. And like I said, most of your calculators should have an answer key. So what I'm going to type in now as my next line is 13 divided by, and then I'm going to go ahead and copy that answer in. So the 0.87, press enter, and it looks like our missing side here is going to be 14.9. So that's our example two. Okay, one more example to wrap up this first portion of the lesson. And in this last one here, we're going to look once again, I think labeling the sides is always the important part. So from the 27 degree angle that I know, 19 would be considered my opposite, x would be considered my adjacent. And so in this example, we're actually going to use the tangent ratio. So the equation would be tangent of 27 equals 19 over x. Now, if you want to try this one, feel free to pause the video right now and give it a shot yourself. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and walk through those steps with you right now. So just like all the other ones, let's go ahead and find that tangent ratio first. So tangent of 27, we'll press enter. Looks like I get an answer of 0 0.509. It really is 5.1, but or 0 0.51. But as I said, we're going to be using that stored value anyways. Because the variable is on the bottom, you always, always, always multiply by the denominator in order to get rid of our fraction. So on the right-hand side, those cancel. On this side, we're going to get 0.509x equals 19. And for that last and final step with these problems, we have to divide by that decimal, that 0.509 or that tangent of 27. So in my calculator, we'll finish that up by doing 19, divide it by. I can press that answer button to copy my previous result. And we get an answer to the nearest tenth of 37 point, looks like that's going to be 3 as our missing side. So as we look back at these four examples, as I zoom back out and summarize what we've just talked about, remember that your objective here is the trig ratios are going to be super helpful when we're looking at a right triangle, and I only know one side length. If we know two side lengths, we already have a way of doing that. That's the Pythagorean theorem. But when I only know one side length, 
As long as I know one of the two acute angles, as I do in all four of these examples, we can set up a trig equation using these ratios. So the calculator will compute what the ratio should be. You set it equal to the ratio that you have and then solve the equation as you need to. So that will wrap up part one of this lesson using a calculator to find sides. I want you to go ahead now and try whatever practice problems I have assigned for you in your lesson plan today. I hope you have a good rest of your day and thank you for watching.